Yep, this is going to be another video about prayer. But hey, I've got some videos on demons and hell and the end of the world, if that's what you're into and you're more of in that area right now. Check them out. They're on my channel somewhere. Um, just search for hell or demons or something like that. And yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll pop up. But hey, if you enjoy the last video on prayer, check out this video. Praise God. Greetings to all of you, brothers and sisters out there in the digital world. Welcome. Welcome back to Digital Disciple Ministries. I'm so glad that you decided to tune into Discipleship Daily, where we're going to talk about prayer again. That's right. We're going to talk about prayer again. This will be the second video on prayer in what appears to maybe become a mini-series on praying genuinely and being real in our prayers. In the last video, we talked about being real, being genuine, and not to use vain repetitions. If you're interested in sharpening and fine-tuning your prayer life, learning how to pray more effectively, more intimately, learning how to connect with God, go check it out if you haven't seen it. In this video, we're going to focus on praying the Word of God. We want to pray the Word of God. Hey, did you know that God wants us to pray His Word? God wants us to pray his word. He wants us to he wants us to know what he's talking about. He wants us to bring his word back to him. And it's not so much because he forgets. God doesn't forget. But he loves it when we demonstrate a desire to know him by knowing his word. How many people pray that do not know the word of God? How many people can bring God's word back to them in prayer and say, hey, Father, in your word, in the Bible, this is what you said. This is what this and this says. And I just, I want that. How many do that? And if you do, praise God. Fill yourself with more of God's word. Allow your mind to be populated with more truth, more concepts. John chapter 15, verse 7. I got Bible for that. This is Jesus speaking. He's instructing his disciples. Listen to what Jesus says. Now, as is custom for me to do, I'm going to be reading this verse from the KJV, but you can follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version you're comfortable with. If ye abide in me, this is Jesus speaking, and my words... Abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. We can ask God whatever we want. And he said, it shall be done unto you. But there's a condition. And the condition is, <clears throat> the if part is, if my words abide in you, and if you're abiding in me, you see, we have to abide. We have to live in God. And God's word has to live in us. It, in order for God's word to live in us, it, it has to find a place in our hearts. We can't have our hearts so full of the world, so full of Netflix, so full of Facebook, we can't have our hearts and our minds so full of Instagram and, and, and YouTube and garbage on YouTube and, and TikTok and all these social media platforms that there's no room in our heart for the Word of God. The only way that the Word can be in us if, is, if, if the Word has a place in us. Does the Word of God have a place in you? Is the word of God living and dwelling 
in you. And if it is, bring that word back to God in prayer. We want to genuinely pray. For example, the Bible tells us that we should come boldly to the throne of grace. That's Jesus says that to Paul. He says, hey, Paul got the realization, I should come boldly to the throne of grace in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Paul says that. And if we know that, if we have an understanding, come boldly to the throne, then we can bring that to God. Hey, I can come, Father, confidently to you because you said to come boldly to the throne of grace so that I can receive grace and mercy to help me in my time of need. Well, I'm in need right now. I got stuff going on and I need you. So here I am for grace. If we don't know what the Bible says, then we can't pray the Bible. If you don't know the word of God, you can't pray the word of God. Now, obviously, the Holy Ghost can guide you and lead you, and you might not know exactly where in the Bible it is, but I have experienced God inspiring me to pray things that later on I discovered to be in his word, and I'm like, whoa, that's cool, and that can happen. However, that doesn't take away from our responsibility as human beings Free agents, having free will, the ability to reason, rationalize, think, choose. It's our responsibility to intellectually engage with the word of God. We can't rely on God just to be feed. We got to go to the table and eat. So the Bible is like the table. God is serving some good food at the table, which is the Bible, the word of God. But we got to come to the table. If you don't come to the table, you ain't going to eat. The food is at the table. It's not in the bed. And that's where some of us, some of us end up in a bed of comfort, in a bed of comfortability. And we expect God to bring the food to us. We expect God to serve us the food in the bed. Maybe God will do that once or twice. Maybe God will do that on occasion, but typically we got to go to where the food is. Oh, there's biblical examples of that. Yeah. The people that followed Jesus in the wilderness, he multiplied the bread. They followed him. You got to go to where the food is. He said, I am the bread of life. Sometimes Jesus ain't showing up at your bedside with a word. You got to go to the table. And sometimes you got to reach to get what you want. And we need to do that. So I'm going to invite you to the table. Come on to the table. Get you some good word so that you can fill yourself so that when you pray, you're bringing something to God. This whole thing, this this book, the Bible, it's a law book, a testament, a trust. And when we're dealing with spiritual situations, there's got to be a reference. There's got to be a grounds. Why are you praying what you're praying? Do you have biblical grounds? When you make a petition, do you have biblical reasons? Do you know who you are and why you can ask for what you're asking for? A lot of times, we don't know who we are because we don't know what the Bible says. We don't know what we're entitled to because we don't know what the Bible says. But when we begin to demonstrate some identity, when we begin to demonstrate some authority because, hey, I know who I am. I know that the Bible says I can receive grace and mercy. I know that the Bible says that God didn't give me a spirit of fear, so I'm not going to accept this fear. There's a degree of knowledge that the word of God brings to us that empowers us to pray more effectively, more authoritatively. We're not just shooting a blind shot. 
But we know because the word is in us. And that's powerful and that's important. And we've got to get that. So, hey, I hope that this inspires you and motivates you to get into the word so that you can pray the word of God. You can bring his word back to him. This, this is applicable in praying for yourself. This is applicable when praying for other people, other brothers and sisters. God has thoughts on how we should pray for them. The Bible tells us what to pray for and how to pray for them. And I'm not going to mention that in this video. I'm just going to let you know it's there. We got to find it. God will tell you how to pray for people that are lost. There's a specific way. We got to do it God's way. If we really want to be effective, we got to learn how to do it the way the Bible says. Because the Bible is the word of God, the ultimate authority. Let it be our guide. It's like going to the courtroom. Every time we go to the throne, it's like going to court. Do you know in ancient times and kingdom times, the courtroom was the throne room. That's where decisions were made, executive decisions. Laws were passed. Judgments were made at the throne room. So every time that we go boldly to the throne, we got to know what the laws say. We can't come to the king and, and not know like what we're talking about. Well, obviously you can come to God and beg and beg and beg. But at one point we got to grow up and we got to learn how to intelligently engage with his word. Perhaps that might be you today. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the grace of God ever be with you. We'll see you in the next video.